In the previous lesson, we set up the shader for the muffin as well as proper UV unwrapping. In this video, we will see a nice trick to add tons of detail to our object, but keep in mind it can be demanding on your system. We are going to use render time displacement. Don't mistake this with the displacement modifier. The modifier is for much coarser detail and in order to get the same results with it, you will need to subdivide your objects many many times, which will only slow down your viewport and render. To set up render time displacement, we need to go in the render settings and enable the experimental settings. Then we can go back to the material node editor and add a displacement node as well as a texture node with UV coordinates attached to its height input. Naturally, the displacement node gets connected to the displacement slot of the material node. At the moment, it looks like an exaggerated bump texture and not so much as an actual displacement. For that, we need to go into the material settings and change the displacement mode from bump to displacement only. Now the geometry starts to shift, but there is not enough geometry for good results. Let's add a subdivision modifier on top of what we have and to make the best use of the displacement, set it to adaptive subdivision. The last thing we need to do is dial in the scale of the displacement and notice, once we start the render, the parts that are closest to us look the most detailed, while the back parts of the model stay low res. That way we save on render times and memory, while getting great results. Also it's good to know that what we see in the viewport and what we will get once we do a final render will be different. And that is because in the render settings, under subdivision, the dicing scale is set to 1 pixel for render and 8 pixels for viewport. If you want a more detailed preview in the viewport, just lower that number. But don't go too low, otherwise you might crash Blender or run out of memory. To summarize, for render time displacement, we need the experimental feature set, a displacement node with a texture plugged in it, to set the material settings to displacement instead of bump and to add a subdiff modifier set to adaptive subdivision. In the next episode, we're going to explore the subsurface parameters of the principled BSDF. Also, if you have skipped some of the previous steps but wish to follow along from here, you can get all the project files for this tutorial series from the link in the description below. I will also be adding some bonus videos in there if anyone wants to speed up their learning process. Subscribe for more tutorials and see you in the next episode.